We are going to hear from um, Abraham Klein, who uh, understands this issue of addiction. Um, he, his daughter, and he'll tell you a little bit about what happened to uh, Malky Klein, but uh, his daughter was dealing with her own issues of addiction, and he's agreed to talk a little bit about why he believes this is necessary, this approach is needed, and how um, he believes that this could have uh, saved his daughter's life. I'm truly honored to speak at an event that marks the beginning of a program that, in my opinion, is long overdue and definitely a step in the right direction. A good man once said, a small step for man and a giant leap for Brooklyn. Actually, he said it a little differently, but I took the liberty of adjusting it a little for today's gathering. My name is Abe Klein, and I'm here because my wife, Rivka, and I know all too well the pain and struggle of those among us who are fighting with the challenge of substance abuse. Six years ago, our dear daughter Malki, may her soul be blessed, entered an unknown dark world that was a nightmare for her and uncharted waters for our family. Naturally, at first, this was a terrible, shocking blow to our family, and we didn't know how to deal with it. We were once a very happy, stable Jewish family with deep values. And like many people, we never expected to have to deal with a child doing drugs. Unlike many families that get wrapped up in the shame and turn against their child seeing a bad apple, we were fortunate to maintain and even deepen our loving bond with her throughout her struggle and we focused all of our energy on loving her and learning to understand her struggle. In fact, the night before the fateful day that we lost her, she spent over an hour cuddling with both myself and her mother, whom she loved so much. Malki had everything to live for. She was a beautiful person inside and out. Everyone she met felt her sincere, caring heart. She truly had a golden heart. And most of all, she had a large, adoring family who loved her endlessly. Over the last six years of crisis, it became abundantly clear to us that she was not suffering from a lack of self-control or lacking in the morals and values we instilled in her. Rather, her struggles with drugs was merely the outermost layer of what was really going on deep inside of her, and our dear daughter was in deep emotional pain. According to the American Academy of Experts of Tra Traumatic Stress, specialists in the field of addiction estimate that 90% of their patients have known history of some form of trauma. The lesson is clear. It is much more simple for a person to put themselves into semi-coma, more commonly known as getting high, than having to deal with a deep pain that torments them every waking moment. Healthy, functioning, and happy people do not want to drown themselves in behavior that numbs their ability to enjoy life. As Dr. Gabor Mate, a world-famous expert, says, the addict feels, I'm not afraid of dying, I'm more afraid of living. The lesson is clear. If they are escaping their reality, it's because their reality is simply too painful for them to cope with. Dear fellow citizens of Brooklyn, over the past 20 years, we have lost way too many of our dearest real children to drug abuse and addiction because we have not fully brought to our consciousness that people using drugs need more love, understanding, compassion, care, and not less, as the district attorney said, not out of the box, not putting them into a box. According to the United States Centers for Disease Control, if we eliminate chronic trauma, we we would see a 75% decrease in substance abuse, depression, suicide, and even things like assault and domestic violence. This means that a whole lot of people in prison today are being punished 
rather than helping them heal their pain. And if we would do that, they would happily become law-abiding citizens. Let's try to imagine threatening a physically sick person that if they don't behave normally, they will go to prison. How absurd of a notion that would be. Sick people don't need to be punished and learn a lesson in a cold prison. Rather, they need to be nurtured back to health in a warm, loving, and caring environment. When we turn on the addict and treat them like a criminal, we are certainly misdiagnosing the root cause of their behavior, and we will not be successful in rehabilitating them to lead happy, healthy lives. In fact, we will likely achieve the opposite results. Our dear Malki did not want to die. But the fact that she could lose her loving family and happy life at times was not powerful enough to give her the strength she needed to fight her addiction. While trapped in the, in the web of addiction, there was nothing in this world that was able to scare her to abandon her addiction. She knew the danger to her life, and if death was not a deterrent, then certainly the threat of incarceration would not do the job either. I recently heard a nice anecdote. There was once a young boy who asked his father to play with him. His father was very busy at the time and wanted to give his son something to do to keep him busy for a while until he would be able to play with him. So he ripped off the last page of a magazine that had a picture of a map of the whole world in the back. He ripped the page into small pieces and gave it to his son and said, when you tape this back together, I will play with you. The father expected this task would take his son a long time to accomplish. However, within a short time thereafter, the young boy returned with a page of the world perfectly taped together. Shocked, the father asked, how did you manage to do this so quickly? The young boy looked at his father and said, it was simple, Dad. And the other side of the page was a picture of a man. My focus was on putting the man together. When I accomplished that, the whole world fell right into place. Ladies and gentlemen, by focusing our efforts on putting these suffering with addictions back together, our world, God willing, will fall back into place. After all that we have witnessed with our own eyes and learned over the past six painful years of hands-on experience, we stand with the district attorney and our local council members and everybody else that was part of this effort in advocating for this important life-altering program that can save so many of our dear children. We hope and pray for a better and brighter future for all, for all of our struggling kids in pain. Thank you so much.